In this section, let's discuss privacy and ethics. These are important topics for any voice user interface design. The relevant settings are partly handled by the speech assistant platform, but also your skill must comply to rules and regulations. Let's start with how a voice interaction with a smart speaker works. These devices usually always listen to a specific wake word like Alexa, Hey Siri, or OK Google. To recognize when you said the word, the speaker obviously always needs to record the surrounding audio. However, this audio stream is analyzed locally. It doesn't send any of that to the cloud. If the wake word is not detected, the recorded snippet is immediately deleted again. After the speaker thinks that it heard the wake word, it triggers recording of the following few seconds of audio. In the traditional way, where the speech processing happens only in the cloud, this recording together with the wake word is then sent to the speech service provider. There, they usually check again if you really say the wake word at the beginning, with more powerful algorithms than a small and cheap speaker can do. If it's still sure that you indeed wanted to talk to the smart speaker, the cloud service then transcribes the rest of what you said. Based on that, it will start the corresponding action, like playing music, setting a timer, or starting a custom skill. At any time, you can review your voice recognition history. You can do this in the Alexa app, on the web, or you just say it. The interface also allows you to, de to delete any or all of your recordings and to set how long these recordings should be saved. Another setting you can choose is whether you want your voice recordings to help improve the service. After all, the reason why speech assistants work so well is because they have been trained by millions of customers in real life scenarios. This involves anonymized private reviews of a few recordings so that a human can check if the transcription was correct. The reviewer will never see any other information about you. And considering how many million times per day voice assistants are used, you can imagine that only a tiny fraction will be manually cross-checked. However, if you are uncomfortable with this, which is also understandable, you can turn off this from ever happening in the privacy settings. Then no human is allowed to listen to your voice recording and check if the transcript was correct. This setting is available for Alexa, Google Assistant and Siri. In the future, more and more processing will happen on device. If you think about it, no voice assistant provider is really interested in getting all your voice recordings. After all, they have to pay for the data transfer and all the power and compute time in their data centers. If the device is powerful enough to run the voice recognition locally, it helps save the service money, improves your privacy and even makes recognition faster. While the voice recognition is always done by the service provider, what you then do with the data in a custom skill is your responsibility. Theoretically, you could ask the user all kinds of personal information and do whatever you like with that. However, that's not allowed. You have to follow strict guidelines by the platform provider. And don't forget that you yourself as a developer are responsible for complying to privacy laws and ethical considerations. A custom skill is your product and you are accountable for it. First of all, by default, you only get an anonymized user ID. This is necessary to track if a user has returned to customize the experience. However, you don't get any personal information about the user. You're not even allowed to set a reminder for the user. All these features require extra confirmation. In the case of Alexa, this has to be done in the Alexa app in many cases as an extra area of protection for sensitive information. And it's not always possible to give consent with your voice. Additionally, if you want to publish your skill to the world, you have to comply to many pages of certification requirements. These are very strict and they contain many rules about data privacy, server security, and much more. Especially if you target children or provide health advice, there are many specific guidelines limiting what you're allowed to do. When you think your skill complies to those guidelines, you can submit it for testing. In the case of Alexa, there's a manual review, pro review process that usually takes a few days. Somebody will really try out your skill. 
And if they find out that you don't comply with the rules, don't implement appropriate help or somehow try to hinder users from stopping your skill at any time, your certification process will fail. You will get a summary of what you have to change. Finally, and most important of all, if you are a developer of a skill, you are a legal entity. That means that you are personally accountable for the data you collect and how you handle it. This means that, for example, when your skill targets users in the European Union, you have to comply to GDPR laws. If you don't, you can get sued by your users. So, Alexa handles its part of the security, provides you guidelines and regulations, but it's also your own responsibility to comply to privacy and ethics laws.